in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed but you shall receive power. Say, I receive. I receive. Everything to be received can be rejected. He said, you shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. We began to discuss this yesterday. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. The Bible says... That to be a witness, remember our discussion, a validator, a defender of the purposes of Christ, it takes more than desire. You will need power. The power of the Holy Ghost. That it takes more than desire to do business with God in this kingdom. There are many well-meaning believers. There are many well-meaning preachers, many well-meaning business people. But the possibilities of the kingdom are not only controlled by God's desire, they are controlled by the availability of his power that you access. Are we together? Mm. Psalm 92 and verse 10, my spirit is fired up tonight. Parush kalabragaduziyata but my horn shall thou exalt. Please just increase the volume a little for me. Like the horn of a unicorn. The horn of a unicorn never faces down. Even when the head is down. Even when a unicorn is down. The horn does not face down. It says my horn shall thou exalt in the similitude of that of an unicorn and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. My horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Isaiah chapter 40 please. From verse 1 to 5. Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort ye, comfort ye Kenya says your God. Verse 2. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she had received of, of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. We're reading to verse 5, 3. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. For every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough place is plain five hallelujah and the glory of the lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the lord has spoken it there is a dimension of glory that is coming upon this nation please listen to me there is a dimension of the effulgence of the power the grace of God that will tabernacle upon men and women in the similitude of the prophecy of Joel he said blow the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm upon my holy mountain then he begins to describe a type of people man terrible and great he says that it shall come to pass in the last days I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy your young men will see visions upon your handmaids he says 
Listen, let me tell you this. Let God be true and let every man be a liar. The days that we are coming into are not days of discussions, excuses, and explanations. We are in the days of his power. And the Bible says in the days of his power that the people shall be willing. That we will sponsor possibilities that are not affordable in the world of men by an agency that is not human. Psalm 63. It was David who hungered to see the power and the glory of God so much from verse 1. And David himself began to cry and said, Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. The purpose for the hunger, verse 2. To see your power and your glory revealed in my life the same way I saw in church. When I came to church, I saw the sick healed. Transport that reality to my home, oh God. When I came to church, I saw that with one prophetic word, a man's life changed. I want to see your power and your glory in my life as I have seen in the sanctuary. I desire to see your power, your glory, the effulgence of your wisdom to dumbfound principalities and powers, a species of people that defy the limitations of life. Empowered by the spirit that every church in Kenya is on fire. Doesn't matter which one you go to. Fire from everywhere. You cast out a demon from one church before he lands in another assembly. He's sent by the power of the Holy Spirit that you fortify the spiritual borders of your city by a dimension of power. He says, say unto God, how terrible art thou in your ways. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. Psalm 82 and verse 5. The psalmist cries a tragedy we must change tonight. He says, they know not, neither will they understand. Verse 5. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. The next verse says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high. The next verse says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. Someone shout no way. that the music ministers in this city will lift up the string and it will be like it were in the days of David the sound of anything that comes from you can heal can deliver can bless you become a living wonder a testament of the lordship of Christ over a territory So Isaiah 61 says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. It's a messianic prophecy. First for Jesus and then for his church. Because, because the Lord had ordained, anointed me to number one, preach glad tidings. It takes more than understanding the gospel to preach glad tidings. It takes the anointing. He had sent me to bind up the broken hearted. This is more than psychology. It takes the anointing to heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty. Isn't it amazing that a man can look free but is bound? Says scripture. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound. Verse 2. It says to proclaim the acceptable year. It takes the anointing to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And the day of vengeance of our God. Then by the anointing. To comfort all who mourn. Verse 3. To appoint. Do you know what that means? To select the day that it will happen. To appoint does not mean to suggest. 
to choose a day that you can say today should be your day of liberty to appoint unto them that morning Zion it says to give them beauty beauty is a gift that can be given for ashes it says the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called oaks or trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified this is the heritage of the sons in light we have come to insist tonight let me tell you the truth if you believe that which God is saying your life will change in a way that will surprise you I became tired of religion I became tired of church not in a negative way I read my Bible and as I listened to preachers I was disturbed because what I read was not what I was seeing I left church confused where is the grace that produces the miracles why do we have to keep explaining and explaining and prophesying and nothing happens to the people we say God bless you they return with no testimony God lifts you and they return with no testimony I speak that your life will change and they return with no testimony it frustrated me I asked many pastors questions and they could not answer some said I didn't have faith I believed I did you see one of the ways the anointing of your destiny calls you is through dissatisfaction you begin to sense that I, I may not know what the problem is but I know something must be wrong this cannot be it And that hunger drove me to search scripture. I will never forget the day I placed my hand on the book we call God's Generals. When I opened it, it was as if I was reading about my brothers. Literally. When I read, I said, this is it. The Bible says, seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, Don Muen got it well. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. We may be few, but there is an army of hungry and angry men saying this cannot be the way it should be. The way we beg people to come to church is a sign that something is wrong. Because the Bible says all nations will flow. The way we go ask and plead and say just be patient. The house of God... And so my hunger began to rise to the heavens and I cried I said Lord there has to be more this is not you this does not look like you where is your power and your glory where is the wisdom why is it so hard to save sinners you waste your time and talk for hours and at the end of your conversation they say I will think about it my God what were you saying then he said for I am not ashamed of the gospel it is the power not the suggestion of God there is an ability upon it that compels the listener to the point that believers are used to the word not working it shows by our testimonies we didn't expect it to work we are surprised it worked and I said Lord you must reveal yourself to me I cannot tell a generation lies there has to be a dimension of God that we must reveal we are the preservers this baton has been passed to us and we cannot fail listen to me the hunger of days became weeks weeks became months can I tell you the truth God loves you but his presence encounters are not cheap 
it will take hunger that is greater than your desire for anything to really find God. We, we have a, a generation that cheapens encounters as if they just happen. No, nothing of value comes cheap. He allows your hunger to stretch you. One night, here is my sermon tonight. My hunger had reached the heavens. I knew if he did not come, I may die. And there he walked into my room, the king of kings himself. My hunger had gotten to the heavens. I was not interested in church, fame. I didn't want ministry. I wanted an encounter. Something I could live and die for. I was tired of saying things I was not sure of. Preaching something you go back and say, I hope I'm right. No, that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled of the word of life. It says, but I know whom I have believed. I'm not trying to guess. I am persuaded. When the Lord Jesus appeared to me, Where is the other gentleman that played keyboard with you yesterday? Is he here? Please call him. The two of you can do it together so that there's something about the strings and the spirit of prophecy. It says, I will reveal my sayings upon the harp. Now, my hunger had gotten to the heavens and when Jesus came, now please look up. The strange thing, pastor, when I saw Jesus, I knew respectfully that many people represented, representing him did not know him. I was in shock. This was the man I'd been preaching about. Jesus, the son of the living God. Any part of him was what you're looking forever. You know, you cannot look at a human being forever. If I look at your legs after a few minutes, I'm tired. I find something else to look at. Not Jesus. Brilliance. I told you yesterday, he never spoke a word, but he said many things. That was when I learned that the language of God is not English. It's not Hebrew. It's not Latin. The language of God is light. He does not have to talk to speak. His light is a voice. It speaks to you. Did the Bible not say the entrance of thy word give it light? And he stretched forth his hands towards me. When he stretched forth his hands towards me, the kind of light that came from his hand, I stand before God Kenya. How I did not die is something I will ask him when we meet him in glory. No man can receive that level of light and be alive. And everything entered me. And then he left. I don't know how he left. But he left. And my life changed. I picked up my Bible. And there was a straight line from Genesis to Revelation. I saw things I never studied. I understood what Paul said. How by Revelation... The mystery was made known unto me. Please listen very carefully. There is a reason why I say what I say. In one other encounter, the Lord appeared to me and said, Son, from today I give you my presence as a gift. And then I saw this angel standing before me. And he said, this angel will walk with you. And I said, what is his name? And he said, he is called the angel of the Lord's presence. Wow. This angel. That's what is responsible for the miracles and the signs, the wonders. The impartations. And then in one other encounter, the Lord gave me an instruction. He said, every city and every territory and every nation I send you to, there must be people in that meeting that the light that came from me to you must you cannot leave that nation and that territory until some of those people please help them
is a spirit of revival it is a restoration of the act the ordinances of God it is not the bragging of a man this has nothing to do with being a man of God and ministry it is the privilege of being the host of the presence and the power of God for a generation for a territory because when he wants to minister to Israel he finds Jacob he sends a word to Jacob and then it is lighted upon Israel and every time he grants the opportunity to come to a nation it is more than a church meeting is the coming that opens the two lift gates of a nation and begins to allow spiritual realities to find expression even by the spirit now the lord is that spirit is hers and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty then he says but we all with faces unveiled beholding us in a mirror the glory the shakina of god that we are changed from one dimension of glory to the other tonight you are immersed in a sea of his glory the glory that excels the glory that can change the glory that can turn around the captivity of ages within a moment within the twinkling of an eye there are men and women of God here like Saul the son of Kish who are about to encounter anointings graces mantles for their destinies you've seen it in your dreams You've heard it, it's been prophesied to you. But let me tell you, tonight is the night where you will drink of the wine that needs to be released for this generation. Kenya, the old wine is finished. Kenya, I stand and speak by the apostolic and the prophetic. Behold the new wine. The wine, the feast is not over. The new wine comes to you, comes to your altar. Women rising in the strength of Deborah. Women rising in the grace of Esther. Men like Elijah. Time will fail me, the Bible says, to talk of men like Gideon, Jephthah, Barak, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, stopped the mouth of lions. Africa, that rejected stone, the shofar is blowing, that that which is dead will come back again to life. Whether it is for ministry, whether it is for business, we are about to enforce the reality of the life and the power of the spirit. There will be a demonstration of the possibilities of the kingdom across the length and the breadth of Kenya in a way and manner. Hear me, I prophesy to you, there is a new anointing. There are young people arising from every church, from every campus, young people by the spirit under the influence of the spirit they will have encounters god is bringing balance to them the labor of the fathers of faith in this land have risen as a memorial to heaven and the time has come so we join the heavens to blow the shofar over kenya arise to a new dimension in the spirit where you are just open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray in the spirit please pray in the spirit don't be distracted tonight your life will never be the same your nation will never be the same.
Harusha lato sebaranda skibadiyash. Casting crowds, lifting hands, bowing hearts, it's what I've come to do. Casting crowds, lifting hands, bowing hearts, it's what I've come to do. In your name, we will rise. I don't know. You reign on high. We will rise. In your name, I don't know. You reign on high. I don't know. Listen, give me five minutes if you can, and then we'll stand back and I'll begin to minister. We'll not take much of your time. Let me just share with you a very big key. Please sit. I want to share with you one secret that can grant a man access to host the power of God. Jesus began to teach us on the mysteries of the kingdom. And he said, the hour has come, listen very carefully, that the Son of Man be glorified. And then the very next verse he says, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, the door that leads to life is death. The door that leads to power is death. More than your fasting, more than your prayer, more than your Bible study, the prize for all of God is all of you. More than your money, more than your preaching, more than your intellect, you want all of God. The prize is all of you. Here's how Paul says it. Chapter 12 and verse 1, Romans. I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye offer your bodies, not your spirits, as living sacrifices. Holy unto God, he calls it your reasonable act of worship. The fire never falls until there is sacrifice upon the altar. The men that God will use in these days are not just men of intelligence. They are not just preachers, not just men of oratory. Men who are dead. Only dead men can carry God. The weight of God is too heavy for you to carry in your life. You need to pass through a realm called Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. Madam, the anointing is on you. Look at me. Touch this woman for me. I don't know who this woman is. But I'm seeing this woman step into a prophetic dimension in the spirit. Nevertheless, I leave. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. He says, the life that I live now, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. No eye has seen, the Bible says. No ear has heard, neither has it come into the heart of man. That which God has in store, not for prayer warriors, not for fasting giants, for them that love him. Not them that use him for fame. Not them that use him for a name. 
death is the price for life. Hear what I say, preachers. Nothing will ever cover the lack of the presence of God. Our pews will remain empty until we sustain the ability to host God. We need to present God to a generation in a way and a manner that is greater than preaching. It's a reality. It is for a generation. Then we will see his power once again. We will not have to read books again to learn of his power. We will be the evidence, the living epistles. A restoration of patterns. Like Gideon, it will no longer be Ichabod. Where is the miracles that our fathers told us? We will no longer speak of that proverb. Because we will be living epistles of the possibilities and the realities of the spirit. We will influence governments and systems. The great will entreat our favor because we carry the charisma, the signature of the power, the life, the glory of God. Tonight I have come to blow a shofar over Kenya. And I have come to blow a shofar over Africa. It is true. This convergence is an awakening for Africa that the season has come. The season has come for that rejected stone to arise in power and glory. In 2005, I saw a vision of the revival that will come to Africa. I saw the anointing, mantles, living continents to different continents and I saw that mantle coming to Africa and hiding in people and places that they never knew they were already carrying it and God concealed it so that it does not corrupt their training because there are people if they know the grace that they carry it will corrupt their discipline so whilst you are sitting now you do not even know the kind of mantle and grace and unction that you carry it is sealed until the time appointed. I saw the formation of the army. I saw prophetic worshippers rising from Africa. Men who would write songs that were not composed. They would sing the songs of Miriam. Songs of angels received from a realm that is not bound in time. Songs that could not die. I saw ordinary people under the influence of the spirit nursing mothers that look like weak people in the spirit and the power of women like Maria Woodward Ita. I saw them with power arising from Africa. Tonight by the spirit of the Lord before I leave your nation let us give God an opportunity that that which has been locked up in the bowels of prophecy we will cry that he will rend the heavens tonight and let something that is holy and mighty come from heaven and rest upon our ministries and rest upon our lives. We have only a few minutes. I'll be praying for people and minister will be very fast. Our time is gone. But please let there be a desire. Tonight if you will please, please listen to me. Keep whatever title aside for a few minutes. And let your heart be open to contact something that a generation cannot deny the presence of God. Listen to me. I do not stand as one who is greater. There is an anointing. I see an angel standing just at the back of um, Shalom. There is... The, that row, I'm seeing an anointing just coming on someone. I think one of the ladies there. In the name of Jesus, I declare right now, please bring her here. I want to prophesy to her. There is a dimension of the psalmistry that this lady is stepping into by the Spirit of God. Harusha lakos kabaranda ehasuba hashidahala. 
Rakatosa la de katusa mehese kataba ratusiata. Bring her, Jesus. Shalom, shalom. Jehovah, shalom, shalom. You're welcome in this place. Shalom, shalom. Jehovah, shalom, shalom. You're welcome in this place. Shalom, shalom. Jehovah, shalom, shalom. You're welcome in this place. Hallelujah. Please listen, we're about to pray. Bring the lady that will shout loud under the anointing now to the hearing of everyone. Bring her. You're welcome in this place. Did the Bible not say you are come unto Mount Zion? It's not just a testament. It's a reality that you have come before the innumerable angels, the spirits of just men made perfect unto Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. My dear, I shift you to new dimensions in the spirit. I decree and declare that the power of the Holy Ghost comes upon you and turns you into another person by the spirit. Yeah, yeah. Welcome in this place. Please hear me. I want to pray for you now. But listen to me. There are three ways by which a generation encounters the anointing for their destiny. Number one, and I want you to listen very quickly. You can get an impartation directly from God through your hunger and through your encounter. But the biblical pathway is through the mystery that the Bible calls impartation. Please listen. Impartation is not anointing with oil. Impartation is the transference of spiritual possibilities. The possibilities that you command are predicated on the grace, the dimension, the mantle that is upon your life. Now please watch this. Out of her now. Release that lady now. In the name of Jesus, out now. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, please hear me. Except God is not God. Any challenge that walk here with you this night, you will drop it down here, this place. Impartation. Is a transference of possibilities. Now please watch this. Our walk with God is based on relationship. But kingdom advance is based on covenant. Let me explain to you what that means. God cannot give everybody. Just anoint everybody at the same time. No. When he wants to release a dimension of his possibilities on earth. The way he does it is to find a man. When he finds a man, he enters a covenant with that man that becomes the platform for allowing a territory experience that spiritual possibility. And then that man becomes his, his, the gatekeeper of that grace within the lifespan of that dispensation. No man will access that dimension of grace ignoring that man and ignoring his sacrifice. Let me show you how it works. Listen. Today, when we talk about faith and the word of faith, start from anywhere in the world, it will stop at Kenneth Copeland. He is the spiritual system alive today after Hagen that is the gatekeeper of that spiritual possibility. If Copeland dies, God will find another man and enter a covenant with him that represents the continuity 
of that dimension of possibility. Hear me please. No matter how you love God, there are anointings that will not come to you directly. They will come to you in alignment to men and women that by God's predeterminate counsel and through the sacrifice of alignment have entered a covenant that allows that dimension of grace to be visible within a territory. Hear me? It is not human worship. When he sends a word to Jacob, it is because of Israel. He does not send the word to Israel. He will send it to Jacob through covenant. And Jacob will take it and make it visible in Israel. Elijah was such a man. Elijah was not a, a, a man. Elijah was a body carrying a spiritual system. A spiritual system of the prophetic. Because every time the move of God is about to come, Elijah must precede. Elijah is a system. The first manifestation of the spirit of Elijah was in Noah. Not just the man Elijah. When Jezebel, the same way Jezebel is not just a woman. Jezebel is an antichrist system. And she seeks to carry out her rule by sitting in government. Every time Jezebel is in a place, she's looking for men of power. Because this is how she operates. And so Elijah the Tishbite shows up. And when he shows up and judges the prophets of Baal, listen very carefully. Jezebel picks a fight with Elijah and Jezebel vows that she must remove the head of Elijah. Elijah goes to heaven. Jezebel dies. We come back to the New Testament and we see Elijah coming back again in a strange man called John the Baptist. We see Jezebel coming back again in a young lady called the daughter of Herodias. The bodies disappear but the systems continue. And just like Jezebel said, the young lady danced before the king and he said, what do you want? And he said, the head of John. Like I told him I will remove his head. I'm still at it again. Please hear me. Human bodies may come and go, but the system of God is a relay. The mantles that come upon you will not start from you. It's a continuation of a program. The bodies that carry it may come and go, but the agenda remains the same. This is what God has brought us to do. Is someone ready to pray? Are there people that pray in this place? Please, I'd like you to find someone and be serious tonight. In the next two, three minutes, lift a cry to heaven. Father, let something from heaven, let the grace and the unction Matasco-barikata Come upon my life Transform my life Lift your voice and pray Kenya Can you pray? The power of the Holy Ghost turning our lives into signs and wonders. The power of the Holy Ghost shifting men by the Spirit to new dimensions. The power of the Holy Ghost turning businessmen to signs and wonders. Mary said, how shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. He said, the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Shall overshadow you. Man of God shall overshadow you. Businessman shall overshadow you. Someone pray. Pray for your ministry. You are about to receive something. 
some of you who travel from other nations pray that the fire of the Holy Ghost will come upon you and you will go back to your nations with signs and wonders Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.